Okay, good morning everyone. Today, yeah, I, I'm going to present about the biological degradation of the biomaterials. So, yeah, last, last three weeks, yeah, we do like that. Maybe you guys can remember something. So I upload all of my lecture in YouTube. So yeah, you can see anytime, whenever you want. And this time we are talking about biological degradation. So I refer this uh, biomaterial science textbook, and then maybe I can share this textbook PDF file with you. So when you think about this degradation of the, actually in this case they mentioned about the polymer, but you, we can apply in any biomaterials, including ceramics and metal. But when you think about the ceramic, maybe except some um, bioglass or other very poorly crystallized amorphous ceramics, they are rarely degraded. The metal also maybe just, as far as I know, magnesium can be degraded. But except magnesium, yeah, no metal can be degraded. Maybe they can degrade in very small, small amount, like few 0.1%, but when you say degradation, it's over 10%, something like. So that's why most of people, they focus on the polymer degradation. So today, we are just focusing on the polymer degradation. So, and then when you th can think about degradation, they have some physical degradation and chemical degradation. And from the physical, actually the degradation meaning is quite large. So that can include this resorption, swelling, softening, dissolution, mineralization, other things. And even fracture also described as degradation. But, and then the normal way when you think about the degradation is the chemical, right? So thermolysis, oxidation, solarolysis, including hydrolysis, alkalosis, aminolysis and photolysis from UV, visible, and radiolysis, gamma array, x-ray, e-beam, and fracture-induced radical reaction. So, so, today, so let's say if you expose your polymer material in the outside for one year, you can see they can be degraded, right? This is called photolysis, okay? And then also if you expose your something, your body, to nucleic, plant, maybe you can be exposed by x-ray or gamma ray, so you can be degraded, right? And then when you, when you expose your biomaterial in the body, what can be happen mostly? This is called oxidation and, and solarosis, okay? So thermolysis, maybe your body temperature around 37 is not much very harsh condition in terms of summer. So mostly if you put the material in the body, oxidation and solarosis among them, just hydrolysis is common way to be degraded. Because you, your body normally doesn't have any alcohol, right? And the aminolysis, maybe it can be happen in your body sometimes, especially in your stomach. So, but if you implant your biomaterial in the body, in the, in the, in the blood, you can only think about oxidation and then hydrolysis. So today, we are focused on this oxidation and hydrolysis. Yeah. From the oxidation, there are subcategory chemical and thermo-oxidative, but maybe today we are focused on the chemical. Actually, when you think about the uh, biomaterial degradation, that can be combination of uh, all of this. All things can happen one time, or few things can happen at one time. So, yeah, if you think about the degradation, actually you can expect how this biomaterial can be degraded. So, so let's yeah, read this sentence one by one. In a commonly used category of hydrolyzed polymeric biomaterial, functional group consists of carbon bond. This is a carbon bond, right? C double bond O and other things. To heterogeneous element, so in this R and R dash, when they can have O and S. So for example, including ester, amide, uracine, 
polyurethane and carbonate and anhyd anhydride. This is an example. So this is a carbony bond, and then aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, and alkyl haloxide and acid anhydride. So this can all things have this carbony group. So we can say that can be degraded. That can be hydrolyzed, hydrosis. Okay. And other polymer containing groups such as ether, ester, nitril, phosphonate, sulfonate, sulfonamide, or active methylene hydrolyzed under certain condition. I'll show you later. So hydrolytically susceptible groups exhibit different rates of degradation, of course, which are dependent on the intuitive property, functional group, and other molecular and morphological characteristics. Among carbonyl group, which one is most susceptible to hydrosis? Anhydride. This creates the highest hydrosis rate, followed by esters and carbonate. This is some um, anhydride. They have two carbonyl group in a one monomer, so we can say this is more highest uh, degraded material. And then next is carbonate and ester, and ester and carbonate, which are similar. So when you can see some o oxygen element in the polymer chain, we can expect, oh, they can be degraded easily. Okay? And then, so, and then other carbonic groups such as urethane, amide, amide, imide, amide, and urea can demonstrate long term stability in vivo if contained in hydrophobic backbone or highly crystalline morphological structure. So even though this carbonic group uh, have their hydrolysis degradation ability, but when they are combined with hydrophobic backbone, yeah, they are less. So they can maintain long-term stability in vivo. But anyhow, they can be degraded in, by hydrolysis. And then, uh, they are not very stable to hydrosis. I indicated in figure two. I will show you later. And then the rate of the hydrosis tends to increase with a high proportion of hydrozyber groups. You know, this kind of carbonic group. In the main or side chain, our other polar groups, which in it hydrophilicity, a low crystallity, low and negligible cross-linking density, high ratio of exposed surface area to volume, and very mechanical stress. And porous hydrozyber structure, especially rapid property. So in here, you can easily imagine. So let's say, actually, most of the hydrolytic material, they are hydrophilicity, very increased, which means that they can observe very well water. When you think about the hydrogen, this is the most uh, water uptake by material, right? And then they can be easy, easily hydrosis. And then low crystallinity, always hydrosis. High crystallinity, contrast, low hydrosity. And cross-linking density, when they high, less degradable. But when they cross-linking density low, more degradable. And then absolutely surface area to volume increase, more chance to meet the water, and then they are more hydrosis. Okay? So that is why porous structure, like when engine made the porous microsphere, there is more hydro. Yeah, even though they are hydrophobic, they are more chance to be degraded because of the porosity and high surface area to volume. Okay? And then in other way, uh, factors tend to suppress the hydrosis rate include hydrophobic moiety, cross-linking increase, high crystallity, and chain order, and other things, a low stress, and compact shape, which can induce less hydrosis. So you can define which one is more hydrosis and which one is less hydrosis. Okay, here you... So this is some hydrogen groups in polymer biomaterial. So this is some, also all of this left one is carbonic group, carbonic group, carbonic group, and hydride. So this is the example. So when they, when the water, where they attack? Here. Okay, because water 
this oxygen have hydrophilicity, so this water can co contact here, and then they many chance to cut here. Always oxygen can make something. Okay, so that is why when they have oxygen in the polymer chain, they can attack, and then they can divide like this. Example is amide and CO ester and ester. Okay, and then when you think about this urethane, this is some urethane structure. Always they think they can attack here or here. So you, get, you so you can say when they attack here, they divide like this, and then they come to be like this in the end. Because they also attack here. And then this can be converted to the carbon dioxide. Okay. So one of the chain is urethane. They have NHO, this is called urethane, polyurethane. They can be used for a muscle regeneration because they are flexible. And urea, NH, NH, and carbonate, like this. And then another example is when they have these two carbonyl group, this is more susceptible to water, right? So they can chance to attack here and here, and then the both, of, both water can combine here, and then this is more easy to detach, like this. The example is imide, when they have this NH here, and the anhydride. When you say O, 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 there are a lot of O, so we can say that they are more susceptible to water. And this is another example which doesn't have carbonyl group, but they can be susceptible to water. Let's say acetal, they have many O, so they can, they can be divided like this. Hemiacetal, many OH, and then maybe here they can cut. Okay? And ether, maybe some of them they cut here. And then nitrile, yeah, nitrile is somehow they don't, they don't have any O, but they can be very uh, T triple bond, they can be easily converted to the double bond. So that is why they show like this. And again, and again. And the phosphonate. Where you can find phosphonate? Yeah, your bone. Your bone consists of this phosphonate, right? But bone, unfortunately, they are less degraded because they are combined with other OH and calcium. So that is why they are less degraded. But Originally, when they have some many phosphonate, they can be degraded, right? So, because phosphonate, they have a lot of O. Beyond this P, O, 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 everywhere. So, there can be more chance to meet the water, and then they can be divided. And then in this side, cut, cut, like this, okay? And then sulfoamide and sulfonate, this one, they can be also degraded here easily because this always sulfur and oxygen they are very susceptible to radical or water so they can divide like this and then polycyanoacrylate you can imagine where they cut maybe among this one here ah not this one they cut this this way okay so when I show you this one of the monomer you should know where you cut where the water cut Okay, you should remember where you where they are cutting, and then when I show them, this is a more hydrogenous groups or less hydrogenous. You should remember. This is another example, uh, high stable hydrosis, which means very low stability. Okay. So hydrocarbon. Okay, hydrocarbon means that when they have this CH2 only, blah blah like polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene. This one is where you can find. Polystyrene is a composition of your TCP. Okay? Your tissue culture plate consists of this polystyrene. Okay? Other PP and P, where you can find your plastic bottle, water, water bottle, they are consist of this one. So that is why they are less hydro, hydrogenable. Okay? And then halocarbon, also, yeah, this kind of chain, and then they can be consistent like F, C, L, H, if you like. The example is polytetrafluoride ethylene. What is it called? This is called PTFE. PTFE also used biomaterial. Okay. Hmm? 
Teflon, 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 yeah. The brand name is Teflon. Polychlorotriethylene, polyvinylite fluoride, polyvinylite fluoride. So when some fluoride and chloride are there, you can imagine there are less chance to be degraded. Okay, and then dimethyl silexon. What is this one? PDMS. Okay, this is a composition of PDMS. Okay, they are less degradable, so we can use it as a mold. And then sulfone. Actually, this sulfone is a little bit similar to this sulfonamide, but sulfonamide they have another X, and then they can be cut here. But this sulfone, no, on, only as this bone, no other element beyond there. So they are less, less high stable. Okay. So when I show this structure, you sh you should can, you should categorize which one is highly stable and which one is less stable. Okay. Anyhow, you can think about oxygen. When they have oxygen, they have many chance. But ex except this one, when they serve S and oxygen only, they are less stable. But when they combine with other elements, more, more degraded. And then except it, it's this, this one, nitride, they don't have any oxygen, but they can be degraded. And other things you can easily imagine when they have oxygen. And then this is another except, yeah, SIO. You can imagine PDMS never degraded. And then, yeah, this is some yeah, hy host-induced hydrolytic process. And you can imagine, okay, I got the point. Water can degrade material. And this is the only way to degrade it, the material in your body. So we can imagine host-induced hydrolytic process. Let's read one by one sentence. The body normally highly controlled reaction medium homoestosis, normal condition, 37 degree, neutral pH, aseptic and photoprotected, aqueous steady state. But in vitro start standard, mild, however, complex interaction can occur in your body, exciting activator, receptor, or inhibitor, and they can somehow progress response. So several scenarios we can imagine the hydrosis in the body. Okay. So let's first, ion catalyzed hydrosis offer a likely scenario in your body food because your body doesn't have only water. What 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 you have? Many ions containing hydrogen, H plus, OH minus, Na plus, Cl minus, H plus, something like phosphate, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and sulfonate. Okay, and then other organic acid. Protein, lipid, lipoprotein, other things. Yeah, that can you have. So, and then especially this, uh, PO4 three minus are very effective hydrosis catalyst. Okay, enhancing the reaction rate of polyester. Even order of magnitude. Okay, and then maybe this ion catalyst may be a surface effect, and then. Surface effect means that surf, more surface area, more degraded. Okay? And then depending on the hydrophilicity, of course, you have same concentration of NaCl, but you have more hydrophilicity of polymer, and then they are more susceptible to degraded. It's common sense, right? But, but very hydrophobic polymer, yeah, when they say hydrophobic, you can say 2% less containing of the water when you, when you immerse them. And then they have less chance to observe the concentration of ions, and then they have less chance to be degraded. But in case of hydrogen, we can, including 50% of water, they have more chance to be degraded because of this ion effect. Okay? And what else? pH normally is 7.4, but normally when you implant something, you have some immune response. So they have lower pH. So pH also can accelerate the, your degradation by the water. And then this organic component like lipoprotein and saturating the body, any kind of thing also, they can synergetically degrade. And then enzyme, right? Enzyme also can degrade by themselves. 
Yeah. Actually, enzyme effect and hydro water hydrosis is different one. Enzyme that can chemically destroy something. And then uh, without some energy. And then thermodynamic not thermodynamic equivalent. So while enzyme function in each XF fluid, they are mostly effectively transferred onto target substrate by direct cell contact during phagocytosis. And hydrolytic enzyme and hydrolase proteinase, protein degradation enzyme, esterase, ester degradable enzyme, lipides, lipo your your lipophilic I mean, lipid degradable enzyme, glycosidase. Glycose degradable enzyme are named for the molecular structure that effect. And they are all cell derived protein which act as a highly specific catalytic for scission of water label functional group. So this enzyme they can specifically target which can they can attack. Okay? So this proteinase they can attack specific protein. Esterase, they can attack ester groups. Lipase, they, they can attack lipids. Other things. So enzymes contain molecular chain structure and develop conformation that allow recognition. They should recognize certain structure and then they can divide it. A complex form between segmentation of the enzyme and the biopolymer substrate which result in ines bon cleavage react reage. Lacking the recognition sequence of susceptible natural polymer, most synthetic polymer are more resistant to enzyme degradation. So you can imagine collagen that can be degraded by collagenase. And silk that can be degraded like some, some peptide enzyme, peptide degraded enzyme. But when you think of the just normal polymer like polystyrene or PEG or PLGA, other polymer, they don't have not much of some target specific uh, site, can be cleavage by the enzyme. So they have less chance. So when you think with the, the merit of the biopolymer, uh, bio, merit of the natural polymer, like collagen or silk, they can be degraded, the water, hydrosis, and then enzyme together. Okay? But when you think about just synthetic polymer, like PDMS or other things, polyurethane, they, they are rarely degraded by the enzyme. They can be degraded by the water, mostly. Yeah. So there is a different things. So we can say that natural polymer more degradable than synthetic polymer. This is a common sentence to say the degradation. And the enzyme with the demonstrated effect on hydrosis rates can be quite selective in the presence of several hydrolytic functional groups. So, for example, uh, this, this polyether urethane, urea, and polyester ure urethane, urea, exposed to hydrolytic enzyme, esterase, cholesterol esterase, and protein and elastase were observed for rate of site of hydrosis because this esterase that can attack polyester esterase, so they can be degraded. And cholesterol esterase and protein and elastase as well. And then enzyme catalyst was clearly observed for the ester groups, while the hydrolytically susceptible urea, urethane, and ether groups did not show significant hydrosis as indicated by laser of radio So. When you have esterase in the body, the esterase can only attack the ester groups. But these other, like urethane, urea, and ether group, even though they can be hydrolytic degraded, but they cannot be attacked by the, this uh, ester rate. So I want to say some specific specificity of the enzyme to initiate the degradation. Of course, Many enzymes, predominantly surface effect, 
which means more surface area to volume, more susceptible to enzymatic degrading. You can imagine. So the basic concept, when you want to make your material very degradable, you have to make high surface area. That's why if we want to make nanoparticle, the sphere nanoparticle without any pore, they are less degraded. But when they have pore more, they are more degraded. And then they can be degraded like to this kind of, and then this is, from, at, at the moment, I'm talking about some degradation by water based. So water itself, and then the enzyme in the water. They can degrade something. Okay? About the specific degradation of this extract, I will explain later. And then second one is about oxidation. So surprisingly, your body, they can oxidize some material using two pathways, homolysis, which means that radical, they are divided both sides. Heterolysis, the radical can go one side, so one can be positive, one can be negative. Heterolysis and homolysis. So homolysis is like this. You have radical, and then this radical yeah, can attack this RR, that can be radical attack, and then you have R radical, two things. And this single radical, that can attack polymer. And like this, PCH radical they have, and then radical disappear here. And then this way, this pathway somehow, so radical change. And then finally, when they combine this carbonyl group, uh, this yeah, carbonyl group, yeah, they can divide like this. So this original condition like, like this, but somehow from this cascade, they can be divided like PCOO and PCHOA, something like that. Anyhow, in certain conditions, they have to use water, combine the water, but because of this energy radical, they can be divided like this. Okay, so, and then another heterosis, this RR radical, they are divided unevenly. And then this uneven radical attack the polymer, and then they can sh show like this, and then finally they do like this. And then when they come to be this one, and then this can go here for homolysis. So anyhow, this very complicated cascade, but you can think about, oh, maybe your biomaterial can be encountered, can encounter the radical in your body that can be degraded by the radical, which is called oxidation. Okay? So this is some uh, oxidizable functional groups, like this one, alafitic hydrocarbon, and then aromatic ring-containing polymer. Yeah. When they have aromatic ring, aromatic ring that is kind of structure, and they come out like this, this is more where the curve attack. Yeah. And then allylic hydrocarbon, ether. So this kind of thing. And then amine, when they have amine, and aldehyde, alcohol, and phenol, so this can be readily oxidizable. So, and then this is some, and then well, how we can imagine. So maybe when they have some electron difference among the, this monomer, so you can imagine certain are very susceptible to oxidization. Yeah. So all of the things, they are uh, very, how can I say, electron, Hmm? Um, unbalance. When they have electron unbalance, they are more susceptible to oxidation. Okay? And in, maybe maybe you have many, so some our uh, alcohol group or amine group, if your material have it, they have very, very susceptible. And then aldehyde. So 
what, how you use the RDI, form RDI, right? To fix the cell. So your PFA, they are exposed to oxygen. What can be happen? They are oxidized, and then they are losing their potential to fix your cell. So that's why you have to seal the PFA. Okay? So sometimes you feel that, oh, this time, even though I fixed 10, 10 minutes, but they are fixed enough. What does it mean? They are already oxidized. Yeah, they are losing potential to fix the cell. Okay? So I highly recommend nowadays you just using the, this bottle. For any hour, they can be exposed to water. So when you aliquot the PFA bottle, so you just seal. That's better for you. And then maybe if you have some, our big tank of PFA, some high concentration, also they should be inhibit any oxygen. Okay. So PFA, originally they have some uh, Expire date. They have expired date. Because anyhow, even though you are using cap, they are exposed a little bit about the oxygen. So that's what I want to say. And then when you fix the, your tissue, also you are using some this kind of aldehyde. So always the fresh fresh thing is better to fix the, your tissue. Okay? And then this is um, some yeah, way of to way of to oxidize. Example, ether. They using when they make some radical, yeah, they do like this, and then there can be some uh, something is oxidized, and then like this. Also, this one in the same way, but they have different mechanism how they are oxidized. So yeah, this is one of the examples. So yeah in this in this oxidation you anyhow we can know they can be oxidized. How they can be oxidized? Where is the radical in your body? So current idea is that uh, such reactive molecule are derived from the activated phagocytic cell responding to the injury or properties of the foreign body at the implant site. This cell which originate in the bone marrow and populate the circulatory system, connective tissue, and mostly, what is that? Neutrophil. They can make oxidation, radical, which is called another way, PMN, polymorphonuclear leukocyte, and then monocyte. So all of this kind of inactive cell to initiate the uh, immune response, they have, they can induce, produce oxidation, ROS. Okay, absolutely macrophage also. Yeah, macrophage and and then the combination of the macrophage, which is called foreign body giant cell, also they can generate ROS. So that is why you are using some H2 to mimic some ROS condition in your body, which is generated by the, this kind of innate immune cell, neutrophil, monocyte, and macrophage. Actually, monocyte, when they come to the target tissue, they are renamed as a macrophage. Okay? Monocyte, when they're in the body, body fluid or your blood, there is a monocyte, but they are renamed as macrophage when they're to target tissue. And then, yeah, neutrophil, yeah, they can very powerful and wound site mount a powerful but transient chemical attack within first few days of injury. So when you implant your, your material, just one or two days, the major player to attack the, your material is neutrophil. Okay? And the chemical susceptible biomaterial may be affected if they are in close adoption. Of course, activate macrophages subsequently multiply and subside with, within days after neutrophil attack. And benign wound site, or in a weeks, if stimulants such as toxin or particulate are released in the site. 
So macrophage, few days to week. Neutrophil, one or two, three days, early time. And then their fusion product, foreign body giant cell, fusion of the macrophage can survive for months even. Urine plant surface also remain resident in collagenase capsule for extended period. So when you implant your material in subcutaneous and then after one, after one month later, two months later, if you can find this giant uh, body giant cell, full body giant cell, which means that they initiate very huge amount of immune response, which means not good. Okay. So when you, when you see some histology, HNE, and then when you find this foreign body giant cell, which means they can make huge immune response. And then huge immune response, meaning they can generate huge amount of virus. Okay, you can expect like that. So based on the subcutaneous study, you try to find this foreign body giant cell. When they have, maybe the immune response is not good. But this neutral pain macrophage, anyhow, they should be activated by your, your implanted material. So while mechanism cell attack and oxidation by material, not yet unconfirmed. Actually, this below one is some kind of hypothesis. Maybe some people, they mention this can be designed in your body, but not 100%. This, you can imagine this is one of their examples. So PMM, this is some neutrophil, and macrophage metabolize oxygen to form a sulfoxide anion, O2 minus. This intermediate can undergo transformation to more powerful oxidation on conceivably can initiate homolytic reaction on the polymer. And then SOD, a ubiquitous peroxide enzyme, can categorize the conversion of sulfoxide to hydrogen peroxide. SOGs in your body, which in the presence of the MPO, myeloproxidase, derived from neutrophil, is converted to hypochlorized acid, HOCl. HOCl, you can imagine this is some LAX, NaOCl, HOCl. They act very similarly. So in this MPO, how they, how they make it? MPO is major secretion from neutrophil, Songmin. So that's why we have to measure the MPO production from the neutrophil. So when you culture the neutrophil on your material, and then when the neutrophil can make more MPO, this enzyme, and then you can imagine, oh, they can initiate very high RS condition. Then the higher RS condition, they can degrade your material, or they can uh, adversely affect uh, your material. That is why many people, they and then when you implant your, body, your material in the subcutaneous, in the red, and then you gather one or two days later, and you check the MPO amount in your material, you can see how this material can initiate the ROS. Okay. So anyhow, this HOCL formation from this MPO and SOD and hydrogen peroxide, this is a major player to attack your material, oxidation. So blah, blah, something like. And then figure of A, so radical and ionic intermate of HOCL, they may initiate biomotor oxidation. Figure 9 is a diagram showing leukocyte phagocytic process that employs endogen endogenous MPO catalyst of HOCL formation. In the general sense, MPO may come from within or out of the cell, and that can be major player. Occluding prime period burst of the M PMN neutrophil activity followed by macrophage activity normalized result within a week. This no anyhow, you cannot escape this uh, neutrophil and macrophage attack. But however, this foreign body subs subsequently remain implanted, sustained if a futile attempt to phagocytal implant device provide a prolonged release of chemical and material. This phenomenon called exocytosis occur over months to possibly year and macrophage the line. Long-term chemical degradation of the polymer. Okay. So anyhow, when they have mentioned the phagocyte, 
phagocyte is some eating something material. So let's say from the, this oxidation capacity, your biomaterial little, little degraded, and then where this degradable degraded material can go, this degraded material, little things that can be uptaken by the cell, which is called phagocyte. Okay, and then when they neutrophil and macrophage, they, they phagocyte certain degraded moiety, but when they feel this is not good. And they, they are generate more ROS, more MPO. And then this uh, cascade go exhalate, exhalation. Okay? So neutrophil and macrophage, when they meet the oxygen, they activate in factor, they make a superoxide onion. And then this onion, they using the SOD, hydrogen peroxide, and then this ferric ion in your blood, they can convert like this, and hydrogen radical up here, and then MPO, neutrophil secretion enzyme, they convert this H2 to this very strong hypochlorous acid. And then now they can make another amine group, and then these all things, they are potential oxidation by phagocyte process. So phagocyte process means that when the neutrophil and macrophage meet, the material, even though they are on the surface, where they literally uptake certain material, they can make this kind of very uh, various ROS. And this ROS can attack your material for oxidation, and then they are degraded. In other way, this ROS also can accelerate the immune response. Okay. So even though today we are focusing on the oxidation. But oxidation also can be easily easily translate to the immune response. So, so that's why you have when you have some uh, not good effect in, in vivo, like liver, liver your nanoparticle can have some bad effect in liver, and then you can culture the macrophage in the liver cell. Liver tissue they have macrophage, and then mac macrophage plus nanoparticle, and then see what what will happen. They can secrete more ROS, or when you culture your material with neutrophil, when they secrete more, more MPO, we can expect, oh, this is not good. Mm. And then you have to make another strategy, how you make it in a better way, like pegylation of your nanoparticle, or amine functionalization, or carbon functionalization, or lipid layer coating, something like you have to make your own way. How you, of, how you, um, escape this bad cascade. So we can say Kishi is like uh, two mechanisms major in your body, hydrosis and oxidation. Given the following polymer, you can imagine what is more hydrosis and what is more oxidation, or both process indicated. Okay, this is your QT exam. I will make like this. Okay. So try to make some answer. And what are some common polymer functional groups susceptible to hydrosis? I already explained, right? Many oxygen groups when they have, except PDMS and sulfur, S double bond O. So yeah, maybe so you got the point. Maybe your material can be degraded by water or enzyme or cell by the oxidation, ROS. And then how you, uh, how you measure? So we have very this strong document, IOC standard. So, so I highly recommend you refer this IOC standard about the sample preparation reference material. Actually, uh, our sub subcutaneous methodology or other like cancerologic effect are very in detail described in this ISO, ISO standard. ISO 10993, sometimes you saw this one in material meso. This is some um, biological evaluation of your, your medical device. So which means that you can make your own material for the patient, and then if you get some approval from FDA, you should pass this exam. All of the exam appear here in very detail. Okay. So how they mention? 
So as you know, depending on surface area, more surface area more susceptible. So depending on their thickness, 0.5 over 1, and then they, example, their forms, film, so let's say film and 0.5 millimeter less, they recommend 6 centimeter square per ml. Okay? This is their suggestion. 0.5 to 1, tubular wall, small, mold, mold, small molded item, like disc, other thing, like this. Over 1, and then larger molded item, 3. Over 1, but elastic by closure. What does it mean? Like rubber band, rubber, something like that. 0.25 because their elastomeric closure uh, they have uh, less surface area compared to other so we need more water to incubate them and the irregular shape like let's, let's say your nano cement you feel like irregular shape and then you just add a gram because you didn't know the surface area exactly, and then you can do like this 0.2 gram per ml. Like powder, pellet, or non adjuvant molded items. And then regular shape, porous device, low density, less crystalline, yeah, more susceptible to water, and then we need less gram. Less gram means that. Uh, less gram, more water we need it. I, I'm not sure yeah, how they design like this, but because this is have less water amount than this, right? This is more water amount. If we imagine the same amount, but anyhow they design like this. So actually there are no standard methods available at present for testing observance and hydrochloros so this is the protocol is the protocol. So determine the volume of extraction vehicle at each 0.1 gram or 0.1 centimeter square for material observance. Then mixture. This is some for hydrochloride like hydrogel. Let's imagine this hydrogel, there is no, no Determined protocol, but you can use, use this 1.0 gram or 0.1 centimeter square in an extraction mixture. So you can just mention, um, I design like, I, you can imagine, I want to check some degradation ratio of your material, and then you need some reference. How much water or enzyme you will add? In that case, you can use this kind of standard because this is our actually so this standard can be used to check some degradation ability and then to check some extract from your material. So let's focus on the degradation ability. Uh, let's focus on first about extraction. So what is the meaning of extraction? Extraction is some kind of uh, extracted moiety from your material by the water. Okay, so when you incubate your material in culture media for seven days, anyhow, something are some things are extracted. So many people, they didn't use the direct material and cell culture together. They prefer to use extract. So after extract your material in culture media or water for seven days or three days, in this using this condition, and then they use extract and then treat your culture, your culture cell. So you can use original extract, which is called 100%, or you can dilute using normal culture media, 50%, 25%, 12.5%, something like that, serial dilution. So in the IO standard, they mention the standard method to check the cytotoxicity is to use extraction. Okay, so this extraction methodology also you can you can use as a 
degradation methodology. But you have something, maybe if you use like this, maybe 10 millimeter square disc and 5 millimeter length, uh, height, maybe 2 or 3 ml you have to add. But the important thing is that so all your material should be immersed in the water. Okay, you should use certain very good uh, bottle cabinet to be fully immersed in material. And then sometimes if we want to accelerate the degradation, how can you do? Very often you change the media every day or every one hour. That's going to give, give you very good acceleration. Or you can enlarge this water amount. Okay? So I think this is some standard. So maybe if you use this extraction ratio, nobody asks you why you use this. Because it's standard. But if you have another paper, they very good mention about some degradation in certain water or enzyme, you can use that difference. But if you don't have it, use this one. Nobody can, can raise a question. Okay? But sometimes this is too uh, moderate to induce some hydrosis or degradation. In that case, you can increase the volume or you can increase some change of media time. So how you extract certain condition, how you make the material degraded, you can use this for the example. They recommend this example many ways. 37 degree by temperature, 3 day, 50, 3 day, 70, 1 day, 121, 1 hour. Note, 24 hour, 37 degree, teach culture media, acceptable factors text. Okay? So Ji Young, this is why I did like this about your material. And for vertical device, which are short term contact with intact skin or mucosa, which are not implanted, Excision times of less than 24 hours, but not less than 4 hours. Acceptable? Okay. So if your material like your membrane just attack the skin by a short time, and then you just use 10 hours or something like 12 hours. But if your wound dressing, that is long-term contact, long-term contact over the 24 hours, and then you have to over 24 or over 3 hours, over 24 hours or over 3 days, you have to extract. And if the temperature greater than 37 degree can adversely impact chemistry and stability of, of the serum and other constant in the culture media. Of course. So that's why people normally use 37 degree to mimic your body temperature. But extreme the condition describable uh, hazard potential for risk exhibition of device or material are based historical percent. Other conditions that simulate reachable occurring during clinical use or they provide adequate measure of the hazard potential may be used but shall be described and justified. What does it mean? This can be used, but sometimes this cannot exactly mimic the biomimetic condition, in vivo condition. For example, when you implant your material, they have low pH from the bacterial infection. And then you can make bacterial infection condition using lower pH well you can literally add bacteria in the cell media okay or or hazard the potential so if your material is inside the, of your knee joint and what happened in knee joint a lot of pressure right pressure your body weight then you can mimic this condition and then you can justify maybe you can imagine even though the hydrosis under the stress, maybe they can accelerate. You can imagine. So that can be justified. So best thing, thing is that try to mimic the clinical use, clinical in body condition when you implant something in your body. And extraction is a complex process influenced by time, temperature, surface area, to volume, and extraction vehicle. Vehicle means that your media. We do it without serum, just water, cell culture media, pH, something like and the phase equivalent of the material. The effect of higher temperature or other condition on the extraction kinetics and identity of the extraction vehicle should be considered carefully if accelerate or 
exaggerated exertion you use. So sometimes uh, your material is inside of your body over one year, one year. The best thing is you incubate your material in the circulatory media one year. But we cannot do like that. In that case, we have to accelerate degradation. So that's why we have to increase the temperature. But sometimes, the equal temperature, they can, make, they can make different chemistry in your polymer. For example, polymer can be uh, melted. Or polymer there, they have some plastic deformation temperature. When your this temperature is over the plastic deformation temperature, yeah, you, this cannot be used. Okay? So you have to think about the material point of view or clinical point of view or your experimental limitation, your time. So after consideration, you can decide, you can design the degradation methodology. Okay, so possible two, two possibility can happen when you can increase the temperature for accelerating the degradation. Energy of the increased temperature may cause increased cross-sinking and polymerization of the polymer, of course. And the decreased amount of the polymer monomer available migrate the polymer. So let's say we have gelma, okay? Gelma, we incubate them 37 degree, but I want to accelerate the degradation, so I, I increase temperature about 50. But somehow, gelma, they are over, they are, and absolutely they have monomer in any cases, even though you uh, polymerize 100%, but they have maybe certain monomer, they are unreactive monomer, they, are, they appear. And then this can be polymerized again from the high temperature, which means they cannot exactly mimic the bio condition. Of course, the best items, they don't have any monomers, residual monomer from the fully polymerization. And then, Increased temperature can cause degradation product to form they are not typically found in the finished device under condition, which means your body temperature. So when you increase the temperature over 50 degrees, but when they start to degrade, and that, that can also make some uh, mislead the biology condition, okay? So material condition use, biology structure condition described in this one, proper instruction is the appropriate extra vehicle, time temperature, condition to stimulate the exaggerated exposure whenever possible. What does it mean, exaggeration? Make it hard, make it hard. Yeah. So, if your material, normally you are implant your material in normal condition, non-infected condition. But what can be the worst scenario? When they have bacteria. Okay, so you always think about the exaggeration and in the worst scenario you imagine and then you try to use that condition for taking your degradation or your extraction as well. And surface area can be used to determine the volume of extraction vehicle needed. Okay, like I mentioned, area include the combined area of both sides. You have to imagine when you make the disc, you have many surface up and down and side. You have to consider all kind of the surface area, not the upper side only, okay? And then exclude the intermediate surface irregularity. Yeah, include the both side, but exclude the inter in, in the terminate surface irregularity, which means the inside of your pore. Yeah, you just exclude it, and then when the surface area cannot be determined, configuration your different very difficult shape of your sample. And then mass volume, 0.1 gram per ml, 0.2 gram per ml can be used. And then other surface area, porous material can be used if they stimulate the condition during clinical use. Material shall be cut, small pieces, instruction, enhanced submersion in the extract media. Sometimes your material have large volume, so you cannot fully immerse your material in the this designated volume, and then you, have to, you, can, you can cut. Okay, polymer, 10 millimeter, appropriate. Mm. Mm. 
So best thing is to mimic your original condition. Let's say your uh, nanofiber membrane can be applied to your skin, and then you can use it on your condition for checking the degradation or checking extract. But yeah, this is the best condition. So, so when you think about this polymer, yeah, to, yeah, for your memory, we focus on the hydrosis from the moisture, and then oxygen from the from the cell. We focus on. But anyhow, you have to think about other things: summer, mechanical, electromagnetic, infrared light, ultrasonic that can degrade it. Okay. So yeah, for your memory. This is the most high susceptible hydrogen, right? Polyanhydride, cut here. Polyester amide, next. Because a lot of O here, they cut here, cut here. And then polyether, like they can come like hit here. Polycarbonate, they cut like here. Okay. So this is called hydrosis. Yeah. So basic concept is more moisture, more hydrophilicity, more chance to be degraded by water. Okay. And then, yeah, actually in your body, yeah, previously I mentioned, enzyme always there from the cell. So we should consider always enzyme. Okay. So we to consider the target enzyme. So we can have many target enzymes like collagenized type 1, type 2, type 3. They can break down collagen peptide bond. What is the collagen peptide bond? Uh, yeah, this is this is um when you make the collagen and when you make the peptide from the amino acid, this this one combine them together and then they can make this. This is called peptide bond. Okay, you can see this many, pep many peptide bond in the your peptide. Okay, so they collagenize type one and two. They attack this collagen peptide bond. Some here, someone here they cut. Lipase. This is lip this lipase structure. Let's say glands look like this. Some the lipase enzyme somewhere here. And then with water. How they how they break down? They cut this, divide like this, okay? So with the help of the enzyme, they can cut better. Hmm. Quite clear here. And then collagenize. This collagen, like this, and then this peptide bone, they can be cut, like this, okay? And then maybe the special thing is that esterase. Esterase, they can cut this ester bone. C double bond O, O. Because you can see many ester bone in your biopolymer. Because this peptide bone, when you can see protein, silk, collagen, something like. But where you can find this uh, glycerol, lipid. But lipid is, we just use it as a coating material or normally. Provide material. Or uh, let's say you can use uh, cell membrane. Cell membrane, what's the component major? By lipid layer, right? And then this lipid can be divided by lipids. And then esterase can cut. So uh, they have another gelatinase, they can cut gelatin. Lipids, they can cut uh, some lipid. Proteinase K, this one, they can cut aspartic, his, his, and serin residue in the molecule. As a silk. So when you, when the researcher, they want to check some silk degradation rate, they use proteinase K and this 14. Okay, esterase, you can cut ester group. O, C, double bond O. MMP, most HCM. Amylase, in your saliva, stomach, 
they can cause starch. So let's say think about pulma. Oh, uh, pulma and not pulma. Yes. Anyhow, if we use some starch-based material, they can cut by the amylase. So let's say if you make some kind of pulma or other seria, other things, you can think, oh, what kind of target enzyme are in the body? You have to think about that. And then you can add that enzyme in your water or through your cellular media under determined pH and temperature and then time. And then you can use that condition for mimicking your biodegradation. That's the best way to mimic your body condition. Okay? And then the important thing is that MMP, you can imagine MMP is a subcategory like the target enzyme, but still, but actually, MMP is more larger. So actually, the collagenized one, this is some subtitle of MMP1. Another name for MMP1. Okay? So when you say MMP1, this is a collagenized type 1. Hmm. So there are three categories, and the MMP is a, uh, there are three category mechanism. Anyhow, MMP has some zinc ion. So you can think about when you add some zinc ion, certain material, you can think, oh, maybe some enzyme, some this degradation can be accelerated. Just simple methodology, simple, simple mathematics. More zinc, more MMP activity, more enzyme degradation. But less zinc, but when you uptake this zinc ion from the material, from your body fluid, maybe they have less chance to activate this MMP. Okay, so first mechanism like this, base catalyst mechanism, glutamate residue and zinc ion, second mechanism, interaction between water molecule and zinc ion during the acid based catalysis. And the third one is, uh, water zinc during catalysis was unlikely, so just uh, histidine from this moiety motif catalyst. Anyhow, zinc ion to assume quasi pentacodine state form. Zinc ion to oxygen combined, catalytic glutamic acid, and substrate carbonyl oxygen atom, they attack. And then two histidine residue, and polarized glutamic acid, oxygen atom. Yeah. So anyhow, the MMP is some um, acceleration of the hydrosis. You can think about that. The enzyme, the meaning is that they can accelerate something, which is called enzyme. So, and then when you think this subtitle of MMP, MMP2 gelatinase, okay? When you use gelatin from the porcine gelatinase here, and the story relation, MMP3, this one, neutropic collagenase, MMP8, MMP9, gelatinase B, certain mission 2, 3, macrophage, melatonin, 12, collagenase 3, 13, MT1, MT2, MT3, something like, yeah. Gelatin, pyrimidine, laminate. They can attack these kind of things. Okay? So there are a lot of MMP. So, for example, if you uh, fabricate one material, and then you co-culture this material with neutrophil or macrophage, and then check or fibroblast or other like phagocytic cell, and then check this MMP activity. Actually, many company they sell this MMP activity set from MMP1 to MMP12. Actually, this is not the end. Maybe 25 or 30. So they have many uh, MMP, how can I say, some kit for checking that one. Some panel, they have it. So you can easily check your activity. So maybe you want to say, our material can be degraded, but I don't know why, what kind of enzyme they are activated. And then you culture your material and macrophage or neutrophil, and then do this MMP panel checking. And then from panel checking, they can show the highest one. Then they can be the, maybe the major player to degrade your material. Okay.
So yeah, from the methodology, yeah, how you remove water to measure the weight of remains is very important. So you want to check the degradation in vitro, okay? In vivo, you can check any time. Just implant it and extract, and then weigh, measure the weight. If they are solid material, you can measure. But how can you do in in vitro? So all weight, you think about initial and later amount weight for as a weight. So normally, when they show degradation, this number should positive. Okay, it's a later number should be lower than initial. But sometimes they can show minus, which means the later is larger than initial. What what does it mean? Which means that your material can uptake the water more than degradation. Okay, so you have to categorize your material is included in hydrogen or solid material. So in case of hydrogen, we highly recommend you have to use freeze drying. So you exclude the water initially, and over time, you change the media every day. And then maybe after seven days later, seven, seven, seven times change, you evaporate the water using freeze dry and weigh, weighing the water material. And then you can exactly know how much amount of your material remain. And then you can know the degradation rate. And then when you think about some Yeah, hydrogel was just solid material like your disc, titanium, ceramic, or other material, solid material, you can use the tissue paper. You just and then measure. Yeah, because this solid material they have less chance to uptake the water. So you just uh, paper tissue tapping and then measure. Or if you have some enough amount of specimen. Just evaporate the water in certain conditions, like 37 degree in your oven or 50 degree oven, and then measure the initial and later. So anyhow, always you, have, you should you should design how you remove the water. Your material is important to measure the biodegradation of your material. Okay, and then sometimes. Maybe if we use hydrogel, maybe small, small things can uh, can de be detected from the hydrogel, from the degradation. And then I have to include these small things or not, I have to de decide. Okay? So in that case, you can use cell, cell trainer. They have 100 micrometer. You just filter the cell trainer, and then below the cell trainer, maybe less than 100 micrometer, you just Assume that this is some degrad degradation already. And then you just gather the superintendent over the 100 micrometer and then freeze dry or just remove the water from the oven and then measure this amount. Or you can use other filter. Okay? So other filter might you have we have 0.2 micrometer filter or other filter. Just you have hydrogel and then just push it. In, this, in the some filter, and then measure the filter amount after remove the water, something like. But I didn't. I just imagine this one. So anyhow, you should. The important thing is that how you remove the water, and then how you decide this small particle can be included in the your material or they can be considered as a degradation material. You should decide. It's up to you. And then try to find the uh, homogeneous way to measure it. Because uh, when you use the paper tissue, maybe it's the simplest way to, to remove the water, but sometimes it's not accurate. But sometimes it's very convenient. So many people also do like this. Paper tissue, even hydrogen, and then measure. So also in ISO standard, they mention about this water ejection and solubility. Yeah, so let's say you think about this polymer-based uh, dental material, they have this kind of water absorption. What does it mean? How they uptake the water? And then solubility, how they lose the water? 
uh, not reason, how they lose their own material. Okay? Maybe from this part, I'll explain detail in next week.